Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, uh, to the Pine Script tutorial series. When we last left off, we had just set up our first script, got our version, our study, and we had plotted close. And so it's time to get started coding. Um, <coughs> so the MACD, uh, which stands for the Moving Average Convergence Divergence Indicator, is a 12 period EMA, or an exponential moving average a 26 period move, uh, EMA and then you subtract the 26 from the 12 and then you take a 9 period EMA of the result obtained from step 3 right sounds scary it's very easy so first thing you're going to want to take a 12 period EMA and a 26 period EMA okay so in PineScript we have a built-in EMA function um, almost getting ready to get rid of this plot but to start, what we're going to want to do is name our variable, right? So we have a 26 and a 12. And so 12 is shorter than 26, and we only have two lengths, so I really like to keep them, keep the variable name simple, right? We're going to call it short EMA. It's equal to the EMA of close over a length of 12, okay? We're going to go ahead and put two lines like this call it variables. So the entire section under here we know later is all going to be variables so that's very easy to come back to. right? So we can do the same thing for long EMA. EMA of close. This time of a length 26. Okay. And the way that trading view uh, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to assume that you have a little bit of a programming background or at least an understanding. Um, you can name variables pretty much whatever you want. I, do not believe you can put numbers in front of them, um, but it's also good practice not to, so you can't do something like three long EMA. Um, usually it's just easier to keep it keep it simple, keep it something um, that you can remember, and this is going to return, excuse me, this is going to return what's called a series, and that's not as important now, but it will be later. <clears throat> okay. Then, for the actual MACD line, that is going to be 26, the subtraction of the 26 period from the 12 period EMA, right? So, I'm going to go MACD line, which is the 12 EMA minus the 26 EMA. And that's going to look like this. We're going to say MACD line is, line is equal to short EMA minus long EMA. And so what that's going to do is take the value of the short EMA and the value of the long EMA, subtract them, and then that va value is going to be stored as the MACD line. Okay, It's very easy. You'll get in the habit pretty quickly um, after you've used this for a while. All right, so we subtracted the 26, and then we're going to calculate a 9 period EMA, and that's going to function as the signal line. Okay. So that's our MACD line. Signal line, which is a 9 EMA of MACD line. We'll say a signal line is equal to EMA of MACD line, the period of 9. Right, and the way that this EMA function works is it's an it's simple it's similar to an SMA. There's a bunch of built-in moving average functions. Um, if you don't, I wouldn't care too much about the math. We're focused more on the programming. If you're interested in EMAs, there's uh, there's an equation there. Um, but essentially, what it's looking for is you call it by EMA, then it's looking for a source and it's looking for a length. Most of the time, you're just going to be putting in a type of candle series. We chose close just because that's standard, um, and then a length, which is going to be an integer. And for sources, you have built-in. You have a couple built-in options. You have close, open, high, low, and then you also have HL2, OHLC3, and OHLC4. And so those are just different types of summation of candle values. And the only arguments, like I said, it takes is source and length. Okay, so. We have our signal line. We have our MACD line. All right. So let's copy this. Take it over. 
toss it in. And you can hit Control S or you can hit Save. And what happens is nothing. And that's because we are still plotting close. So we got to plot something. All right? So plotting, which is going to be the majority of what you're doing at the end, um, takes a series. And you have several inputs that you can put into this. You can change, um, play around with color, line width, title, different styles. You can do dots. You can connect to transparency, um, set a histogram base. You can offset, join, editable. Tons and tons of things you can do. Um, but for now, we're just going to keep it simple, right? So let's look for a series. So let's go back here. And instead of close, I'm going to plot the short EMA. And then on the next line, I'm going to plot the long EMA, and then over here, I'm going to plot the signal line. And we're going to call this whole section plots. I'm going to keep everything variables. variables. Okay, copy this, paste it in, hit save. Oh boy, something's. What do we change? What's going on here? One of the things that makes this difficult is, okay, so, little debugging tip, something's, oh, duh, <laughs> we're not plotting long, you may, Durr. sorry, my notes are wrong, so, we only plot the MACD line, because, obviously, we don't care about those direct EMAs, right? That's why they're all the way up there. Okay, so we'll paste that. Sorry about that. And now we have something that looks a little bit more like a MACD. Okay, and we can check. Um, I'll just do a built-in MACD because I don't remember what mine is called off the top of my head. Okay, so there we go. You can see that it is matching the stock MACD one-to-one, -one. but look at this. This one has some nice colors. It's easier to tell what's the signal line. It's easier to tell what the actual MACD line is, and I like it turned off. This one has the nice histogram that usually comes with the MACD. So let's see what else we're doing. We are going to add the histogram, which is cool. I guess I, I do get to do that. Okay, so the histogram <clears throat> for a MACD is the equation. Here we go. Let me call it histogram. The histogram is under histo line is the MACD minus MACD line minus the signal line. Okay. So we can also plot Histo line. Okay, copy that. Bring it over here. Save or control S. Up to you. And now we can have we have our little histogram. Okay? But like I said, this is not readable. So what we're going to get to in a minute is is the styling stuff. But before that, one thing I want to cover is these variables that you put in, the way that they're stored, they're not editable right now. So there's no input tab. So if you want to change your MACD length, you can't. So in order to do that, we're going to have to do something that uses what's called input. Okay. We go up here, we're going to say inputs. And these work just like variables. And so you can do something like this short length equals the input of 12. 
and this will allow your user or you to uh, make changes, right? Because we don't like fixed length indicators. And then what we're going to do down here is we're going to change this 12, right? I'm going to change that to short length. Replace that parenthesis. Long length. Okay, and we can also do that for the signal because sometimes maybe want the signal length a little bit longer. It's always good to be able to adjust it, right? So we're going to say 9. And we'll change it right there. Signal length. Okay. Paste it. Save it. And now you can see these three numbers popped up. And if we want to make a change, right, you can start cranking this up. And see how the whole thing changes? So that's just uh, that's something you're going to be using pretty constantly. And... Um, it's good stuff. It's uh, it's important. You want to make sure that you have control over things you want to have control over. You can also disable um, users' abilities to change something. So not everything needs to be an input, but the things that should be inputs, you should keep as inputs. And so not only does not only does this work with integers, you can also do true or false series um, strings. Um, you can change the type of candle, and we'll touch on that later. It's very very easy stuff to do. Um, Here's some examples of it, right? So you can change the title, type boolean, def value true, right? And so this is just going through um, if you want to change it from integers to some sort of other variable. Uh, if you want to put in ticker symbols, you can. Um, I think you usually have to set def values for that, but it, it's a whole toolbox, um, like I said. So. I think the most important thing to touch on next is styling. Okay? So, this is really nasty. It's just blue. It's hard to tell the difference between anything on the screen. And so, we always want to make things appealing and informative. And we aren't limited to default colors. This blue is always the default color. Um, we're allowed to be creative. Okay? So, there's a color function. And this color function also listens to a transparency function. And let's see. Cool. So let's change colors first, right? Let's do this. So if we want to change the color of the MACD line, let's say color equals red. And the signal line, color equals lime. And there's built in colors in TradingView. Um, I'm going to save this and I'll show you where you can find those. Now the signal lines are different, or the, the lines are different. Actually, we should flip those colors. Do it like this. I'm in red. It's been a while since I wrote this and I'm rereading it again. So I'll flip those colors, okay? And now it's a little bit more readable. Histogram's still not awesome, but gives you an idea of how to change colors and how to make it readable in the order you want to, you want them to be in. Another thing to note, uh, this is kind of a more advanced thing, it plots um, in the order that it processes things. So MACD line will be plotted before the signal line and before the histogram, which means that histogram will potentially be plotted over the MACD. And so what we are going to want to do is make sure that that is plotted first so that everything else gets plotted on top of it. It's not that important right now, um, but it will be later. And so we like to set ourselves up for future issues to kind of mitigate those, right? So other things you can do. There is a style option um, with the plot. It allows you to do lines, line break, step line, histogram, cross, area, area break, columns. Uh, there's a Boolean option to joining them if you're using circles. And then you have transparency, right? And so what that looks like is if you want, you can go to the style and change how this line looks. So that's what a step line looks like. Histogram, crosses, area, area breaks, columns, and circles, right? Well, so we don't want to have to change that every time we go in. So what we're going to want to do is pop this sucker up. And let's read my notes again change the style to circles. 
and we will change this one to, we're going to leave that as a line, but we're going to write it as that, okay? And if we want to change the transparency, T-R-A-N-S-P, um, you can either have, you can have any value 0 to 100, okay? And 100 will be invisible, 0 will be the maximum amount of visibility, I believe. Yes, that is right. And so, we leave something like that. I believe the default is, we'll make that 80 so it's visible the difference. I think the default's somewhere in 60%. Okay, so you can see how the red line is less transparent. I think I have it backwards. I do. Okay, higher the number, more visible it is. <coughs> Sorry, I'm used to setting my own standard variables for this. So you can make transparency 100. See how bright the red's about to get. Uh, I did have it right, huh. <laughs> it's been a long week. Okay. So they were invisible because it was 100, right? So lower the number, the more visible it is. All right. Easy enough, you also have these circles, and if we wanted these circles to be connected, which is our line, MACD line, let's say join equals true. Wait for that to load, and you can just barely see that there's still circles, but it happens to be connected by a line. Well, if we want those circles to be bigger, we also have a fun a um, additional condition we can ask for, which is called line width. And that can be one, two, pretty much anything. Usually caps, most people keep it at four. Um, for a lot of reasons, transparency zero. We have any of these? Yeah, we'll do two. Zoom out. And now the circles are a little bit more visible, still connected. Um, this is all personal taste. I just like to keep keep things distinct, right? Well, and this histogram is still not a histogram, it's just a line. So we can also apply our style there. Let's say style equals histo. And we're going to say transparency is equal to 80, right? So it's kind of light. We don't want the we don't want the full thing showing up. Uh-oh. What's going on? Should have been histo. What was it looking for? Let's go back a version. I changed something on my notes. Oh, it just wants full histogram, that's right. So you can always go back a version if you break something, but what is going on? Transparency. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna go make more coffee after this video because I am not as awake as I should be. But there we go. That'll fix everything. And we're back. Okay, so you can see the histogram in the background now uh, functioning as it should. It's up to you if you want to keep it as a histogram. I personally like keeping it as an area. I think it's a little easier to read. And for you to do that, you would just change this to area. And keeps that area, right? So we can make it a different color than the default color as well. We'll say color equals white, okay? And it'll, it'll pop up as white now. Okay, so I think that's gonna be a wrap for this section. Um, next section, we're gonna go into a little bit more of some boring stuff, but as of now, you have a functional MACD that you built. Um, math is very simple. There's some other stuff we're gonna cover, uh, but it was that's that simple to have um, your MACD set up. So we're going to go over some more advanced concepts and uh, some good practices. I'm going to go make coffee. All right.